but in this video of the art of investing we have understood in the last video what is investing and why investing is necessary and all in this specific blog we are going to understand the basics of investing or what are the basic investment fields that is available all right now in this part we are going to talk about real estate the third type of investment that you should understand the basics is real estate now real estate has got three different types of it. commercial real estate private real estate and you have got real estate investment trust reits now reit is a new concept what it does is like a commercial uh, developer who develops commercial spaces or retail spaces and other things needs money so what happens he says okay you give me this much money i will not your capital might not appreciate but it's like a debt i'm taking from you i will give you that this amount of money every month or every year or every quarter this amount of money i will give it to you in the form of return the loop the downside is your money might not grow your money would remain whatever you have invested it will remain plus or minus that much but it will not grow much because there is no capital appreciation because the property is there if somebody is rent he is going to use your money and based on your money whatever the rent amount it is becoming to your part it will be paid to you so you get a fixed income that is reit now real estate in terms of this let's go and talk about the commercial real estate commercial real estate can be of two types one is an office space one is a shop lot now what happens shop lot you are taking a shop lot you are paying business you are paying profit you are making business you are making profit and everything you are sharing the profit and that real estate is working in case you want to buy a real estate or rent a real estate or lease out what you do is you think okay i will do one thing is i will real estate a commercial space lease out that space or like i find out you find out a real estate space and then you say i'll lease it out and then you start dividing into small sections and you start selling it to people who need that small office like basically you are focuses on startup so just need like one space one table you just give them the space now per square foot how much you are going to charge you are going to calculate how much square foot they are taking and based on that you charge them that price now one big floor it is difficult to sell but when you break down that same floor into multiple subsection parts it is easy for you to make money because you can have more tenants now and each are paying a very less amount and because they are startups they have they must have done some of them must have done bootstrapping some of them has got some seed funding from family friends some of them have got investors some early startup in early stage investors who have invested some money now they are developing some product they need some place and what happens is initially you can understand and you can tie up so charging a small amount having a large client base is always a better thing rather than charging more and having a less base less customer base because price is a very sensitive issue and india is a price sensitive country so which means if you sell it at a reasonable rate but you can market it well it will be good i'm not selling sell it at cheap and say that you are the cheap developer or a cheap office space provider no because you should justify the rent uh, amount that if you are paying this much you are getting these are the facilities you are getting and make sure that these facilities are available to the tenants if that happens then they are happy and they will bring more clients to you and in that way you will grow up in the business ladder now the fun part is if you buy a house and uh, let's say you have money you bought a house for 20 lakh rupees now you give it for rent you are going to get a rental income every month and that rental income is like a return on investment that you have made for that 20 lakh you have to recover that 20 lakh and also making in the agreement if you are giving the commercial uh, private retail house or is a house apartment that you have bought and you are giving it for rent you have to make sure that you make an agreement with your tenant saying every year 5% will be in hike now having said that if you spend if you put all the money and then you get it the house is still losing the value or the house is not getting appreciated so you are getting a stagnant income now 
imagine that you have done 50 percent debt 50 percent money you have put so you will have to pay only 50 percent of your rent or more you can clear out the house the other aspect is you take the complete debt on your rent you decide a margin that you want to get maybe like two percent three percent margin on your rent and that margin amount once you remove remaining leftover will be your emi which means you are paying but eventually what will happen is whatever the margin amount you are taking out that you have to invest in somewhere and make sure that that investment is going to give a return matching to the return matching to the rate of interest of your debt that you have taken so if if you have taken it at four percent then you must sure make sure that your investments of that margin fund is giving you somewhere around six four uh, percent means six percent or six and a half percent so which means you will have an upper end of two and a half percent that two and a half percent is your actual earning so you have to do that in order to continue further and REIT, I've already told you, I've already explained you, it's just a real estate investment trust and you're just pay, putting the money every month like an SIP or a fixed deposit or a recurring deposit or something. And people use that uh, money, the developer use that money to buy more spaces, to build more spaces, gives it on rent, collects the rent and also keeps his share and distribute your share to yourself. So these are some of the options that is available for an investor when if somebody is starting to invest and this is the basic you have to understand is you need to choose those companies wisely not falling in the trap of like saying oh there's a stock which is available for six rupees i will buy that stock that stock might not reach to 16 rupees then you will disheartened but if you invest in a stock which is about 100 or 90 rupees and is giving a good return that's it I am don't I am no one to recommend the stocks. I am not a certified stock broker or something. I am just sharing an instance from my personal experience. Think of this way: like which stock or which company you should invest. Why? Reason is very simple. The company that you are investing is having a long-term vision and short-term vision. Service industry you might not get much benefit. Uh, hardware industry you might not get anything something those companies those who are contributing to nation building or making some kind of hardware components like steel aluminium uh, then copper all these companies are the one who will be dealing up because they are the one who are existing oil and gas whatever the world happens oil and gas is a mandatory thing and because of oil and gas you need to do something called you have to understand and invest now iocl can be a good option bpcl can be a good option hpcl can be a good option because they're the oil companies whether they are making loss they are making profit does not matter but they will have to bear that cost because that's the part they are the direct contributor to the economy because they are the one who are running the economy so you have to understand that and you have to spend the time that way well uh, sorry for the long video but i thought of making a very simple one but yet to make you understand the basic it was necessary i hope this video has made you some sense if it is please do hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon so that you never miss an update and also if you have watched the other two parts please do like this part i mean the other part then please do like this part and please do send your comments in the comment section if you want to interact with me you can get my email address in the description you can send me a direct email you can chit chat with me if you want some kind of like you are the first time who is going to invest you want some kind of guide and help you can always reach out to me you can always write an email to me and i shall be very happy to you know get into your journey of helping you in setting up your investment account and doing the first 100 rupees investment and Trust me, that is going to change a lot of mindset for you. And yes, uh, in terms of bonds, you can see all the bonds and other things. In the upcoming videos, I will make a session. I will show how to choose the bonds and how to invest and all. So until then, this is Siddharth signing off for now. Yes, my voice is little low because I'm not feeling well, even though I had made a commitment that I will do this blog. I will do this blog. Next up is the topic on financial goals or the goals for setting up your goals so we are going to set up the goals for financial freedom how much are we looking for retirement fund are we looking for school 
fees of kids and uh, education or are we looking for building a house to survive based on all these factors i will tell you so keep these factors in mind and when we discuss the setting your goal agenda we will come back to again refer here saying what how this agenda can be planned and all that until then this is that signing off and you do take very good care of yourself season is changing so be careful don't fall sick and don't let things go wrong until then until the next video this is that signing off goodbye have a great day